Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today we're going to be talking about Star Wars apparently being rushed out too fast. Yes, this narrative is still existing, but what's amazing to me is how these shill media, which is essentially what they all are at this point, continue to defend some of the worst aspects of it. They, they, they're starting to give a little bit more room. They're starting to give a little bit more, little bit more way on all of this, but they still refuse to acknowledge the fandom menace. They still refuse to acknowledge that it was a large group of fans that have not been showing up because of this nonsense and not because of any other reason than that. They continue to push out this narrative, this false narrative of, oh, it's Star Wars fatigue, which as I've said constantly, is totally off base and is totally done away with as soon as you talk about Marvel properties. The very fact alone that in March of this year, you have Captain Marvel, and then in April, you have Endgame, and yet both are probably gonna make money, should tell you all you need to know about this so-called fatigue. Marvel does it, Star Wars should be able to do it. The problem is, is that the people at the top have no idea what they're doing. This article does get some things right. It does talk about how poorly managed everything was, and yet it will not shell out the blame against Kathleen Kennedy. It will not say Kathleen Kennedy has no idea what she's doing. It'll just say, oh, well, one of the reasons why it didn't work was because of this, this, and this, which again, A plus B must equal C, and you aren't connecting the dots. So apparently I must do that for you. So I'm gonna try and go through this article as quickly as I possibly can. Because obviously there are certain things that they say in here that are correct. There are of course things in here that they say are completely wrong. And then there are of course plenty of things that they just ignore altogether. But let's get started. Disney and Lucasfilm have rushed out the Star Wars sequel trilogy too fast. And they've in turn ruined the franchise perhaps a little by doing so. I agree with you there, they have ruined the franchise, but it's not because they did it too fast, it was because the content they put out sucked. Which might be because they did it too fast, but once again, they could have put out good content had they had someone behind the scenes who actually knew what the hell they were doing. If Kevin Feige had been running this, they could have done three films in three years and everything would have been fine. I know this because he has been doing two films almost every single year in the same universe and every film so far has been, for the most part, good. And at the very least, even if that hasn't been good, guess what? It's at least made money. After Lucasfilm and 20th Century Fox released the first Star Wars movie back in 1977, it took them another three years for George Lucas' sequel, The Empire Strikes Back, to hit theaters in 1980. Sure, a sequel wasn't something that was immediately planned and put into development, but even the rest of the Star Wars saga stayed true to the three-year gap per movie. Now, of course, this is something that they're going to try and use as an excuse. Oh, if you had just waited three years, it would have been different. <sighs> It would have been different if you had had someone else in charge, because once again, if you don't have someone who's trying to put together a consistent story, you don't have a good franchise. The reason why it took them three years is because they did not have the same type of technology that we have today. It's much easier to make a film now in 2018 than it was back in the 1970s, and on top of that, as they just admitted, they didn't have anything planned officially until that film got out there and did very well. It wasn't until then they started planning for anything else, and because it took longer for films to be made, guess what? It took them about three years to get the movie out. Nowadays, though, you can get a sequel out relatively quickly. You can start filming movies at around the same time and get them out in subsequent years. We've seen it happen with Lord of the Rings. It's now happening with Avatar, unfortunately. But because of the technology we have today, it is totally within reason. So trying to make a comparison between the original trilogy and the modern trilogy does not work because modern tech did not exist back in the 1970s, and so therefore you cannot possibly make the same comparison. Editing film clip, editing film clip clips and film reels is totally different than using a computer. Yes, I'm not trying to say that either of them are easier or harder, but obviously it's going to take a lot more time to use actual film reel than to do everything on your computer. Just saying, technology has come a long way, which explains why you don't need to do this anymore. Where Star Wars being made for the first time today, then sequel likely would have been released as soon as possible. Then, however, it was afforded a little more time, time that Lucas and his collaborators made the most of. The Empire Strikes Back released in 1980, and then 1983 for Return of the Jedi. Once again, though, the story wasn't better because of the three years. It's only because, it only took three years because they did not have the technology to make it any faster. So, you can try and argue all you want to say, well, they had three years to develop a story, but in reality, they probably spent around the same amount of time writing the actual story, and then the rest of the time trying to work through the filming. 
Now, again, you can try and argue it all you want, but at the end of the day, that's just how it works. It's a release template Lucas would stick to for his much maligned Star Wars prequel trilogy. Star Wars Episode One arrived in monumental hype in 1999, followed by Attack of the Clones 2002, then concluding with Revenge of the Sith in 2005, all of which released in May as well. And guess what? None of them lost money. Yeah, remember when you kept bringing out that excuse? Oh, it was because it was a May release. And then that excuse just didn't pan out because you had actual examples of Star Wars films coming out in May making money. And then, oh no, it's because of Star Wars fatigue. And yet, they're continuing that even though it's been debunked countless amount of times. This person, I think, is trying to say, look at all this information I have and therefore it makes me correct. Which is just not the case here. Yes, it's three years, but again, it's still also a very different time in film. This obviously didn't guarantee quality, but it did grant. <laughs> it, what it did grant was time. It was time for the filmmakers to adjust and react. Time for the fans to cool off, pause, and then get all excited again. Disney changed all of that. But you see, in this one paragraph, you have now totally debunked and totally criticized the first point you made. You tried to say, oh, look, it took him three years. Yeah, it was because they didn't have the technology, so they couldn't do it any faster. But still, it took them three years to develop a story and look how great the original trilogy is. And then you bring up the sequel, uh, the prequel trilogy. And yes, there are people that still defend the, sequel tri the prequel trilogy. And guess what? I would say that the prequel trilogy is much better made and is a mo more cohesive story and a, mo more co <laughs> a more cohesive set of films than what we have currently with the sequel trilogy. But that's because of incompetence, not because of time. Time does not equal quality, <laughs> as can be easily seen by the fact that some of the worst dialogue in Star Wars history exists within the prequels. Yes, it's entertaining. Yes, it's memeable. Yes, I love it. However, you've just shown that three years does not make a damn. <laughs> so you're still losing the point that you originally tried to make in the first place. Three years for the original trilogy. All three films are fantastic. Three films for the prequels. Much maligned, very mixed reviews. Yes, there are people that defend it. Even I defend it on occasion because at least, again, the story is there. But still, not the best writing in the world. So again, time does not create writing. Here we go. Now, Disney has picked up Star Wars. Star Wars was going nowhere fast when Disney stepped in to purchase Lucasfilm back in 2012. Really? I remember a series called Clone Wars, which I didn't watch at the time, but a lot of people did, and it was doing well enough to where it was able to get multiple seasons and would have kept on going, but then guess who canceled it? That's right, Disney did, because as one of the voice actors of the series said, to Disney it was a little too graphic, which means the series could have kept on going, Almost for an infinite amount of time. I'm sure George Lucas may have moved on to different projects over time, but it was still a very successful series. Even now, more successful because now Star Wars content is so devoid of any character and so devoid of any true content that it's leaving this gap. It's leaving this void that needs to be filled. And a lot of people like myself are being pointed in the direction of things like Clone Wars. And it truly is an amazing show. Even Rebels, which was Disney made, was good, but it's only because of the same team that was brought over from Clone Wars. And even though Disney tried to Disneyfy it up, it still wasn't enough to take away the quality that they had, even though I would say Clone Wars is overall a better series. The release of Star Wars The Force Awakens in 2015, an event to rival the Phantom Menace. The Phantom The Phantom Menace? Man, I love The Phantom Menace so much more. Was the revival of the Star Wars franchise on the big screen for Disney CEO Bob Iger, Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy, and everyone else. That was just the beginning. That was a brand new era. One which would see a Star Wars film released every year ad infin infinitum. Infinitum. I don't take Latin. Disney had a shiny new toy one to play with it constantly. That sounds weird. It just so happened that the toy was one of the biggest movie franchises and multi-media brands ever created, and in four years, they've been able to essentially destroy that brand. That brand has never been more toxic than it is now, and it's not because of toxic fans. It's because of terrible planning and also people representing your company who have created a toxic environment by attacking fans over and over and over again. One of which, Chuck Wendig, that you've actually fired because of his stupidity. If only you could do the same thing for Ryan Johnson, who at this point, you would be stupid to give a trilogy to, because guess what? No one's gonna see it. And when I say no one, obviously I don't mean literally no one. Oh my gosh, why do you use hyperbolic language? Oh my goodness, it's so confusing. I don't really think it's all that confusing. 
Even the Mouse House knew releasing three Star Wars saga episodes in three years would be a stretch, and so the anthologies were born, spin-off movies that could fill the story gaps, but more importantly, fill in the schedule gaps between the sequel trilogy. For a while, even this looked to work, with Rogue One, a Star Wars story, being a big success. Had things gone to plan, perhaps the proposed Obi-Wan Kenobi and Boba Fett spin-offs would still be on the way. The poor performance of Solo Star Wars Story, however, shows the Star Wars spin-offs are also a part of the too-much-too-soon approach, and this is where you are wrong. No, you've actually set the stage to be able to make a brilliant point, and yet you decide to fall in the company line and still shill it up. Even though you're being critical of Disney right now, you are not going far enough to point out the truth. The truth is that Rogue One broke a billion dollars because even though Rogue One went through production hell because Kathleen Kennedy has no idea what the hell she's doing, and even though they've added scenes that people have recognized and remembered for a very long time, even with all of that, it still was not quite enough. Because guess what? Yes, it made a billion dollars, but that is still a far cry from the $2 billion that were made for Star Wars The Force Awakens. But the Rogue One making a billion dollars was made because even with all of that chaos, they still made a decent film. I'm not the hugest fan. I'm not the biggest fan of Rogue One. But I will at least say that there are some really great aspects to it. And if it had been put in the hands of a president who was able to actually craft it and pick the right people and not get involved... I think it would have turned out to be even better and make even more money than it did before. The reason why Solo didn't make money is not because it was a terrible movie, though of course I think that it was a, you know, C-level movie at best. The reason why it lost money was because it came out six months after The Last Jedi, the most divisive Star Wars film ever. The, like, the film that seriously is the reason why Solo lost money. You just mentioned Rogue One. Rogue One made a billion dollars. It makes no sense that Rogue One would make a billion dollars, and yet any other Star Wars film would not even crack 400 million on a huge budget. The reason why Solo failed is because the same behind-the-scenes shenanigans happened. Because, again, Kathleen Kennedy has no idea what the hell she's doing. She fired directors 80% of the way, 80 of the way through filming, hired someone else who reshot everything. In what world does that sound like a smart idea? And then even with all of that kept on schedule and therefore led to the release that it had. So that film has so many issues to it, but to try and ignore, to try and say that, oh, it has nothing to do with The Last Jedi is just stupidity. You trying to say, oh, the proximity matters because, oh, it was too much too fast. It was because it was another Star Wars film and the fans weren't ready for it is just not true. You can look to the Marvel films, you can look to television series like Game of Thrones, where people expect and wait to get an episode that's an hour long every single week. You essentially get a mini movie that's essentially close to a general release movie every single week and you get excited for it. Because guess what? It's worked well. It's made well. It's thought out in advance. The writers work. The problem, as you'll see with this article, which I'm again, I'm not going to read much more of it, but there is one most, there's one really important point that they make that I think really exemplifies the main thing and the main part that this needs to have the focus on. Disney rushed out the Star Wars sequels. When Star Wars The Force Awakens released in 2015, it was a huge statement that Star Wars was back. What's more, it was it backed up by taking over $2 billion at the world box office, breaking records in the process. At that point, Star Wars The Last Jedi was already in development with a release date of May 26, 2017, penciled in. Star Wars The Last Jedi was then pushed back to December of that year, but that, made, but that just made a two-year window rather than 18 months. Still, there was a window, and that window still did not result in, you know, anything better. It still lost $700 million at the box office. Even with the release change, and this is very important, this is the key to all of this, this paragraph right here, even with the release change, it meant Ryan Johnson was writing the script for episode 8 long before The Force Awakens had been released. Remember that this is still relatively new information that was released just over the past couple months. It's impossible to say what, if anything, Johnson might have done differently had he not started until after The Force Awakens release. What is clear, though, is that he would have at least had some time to be reactive to it. Instead, while knowing points of the film would hit, he went off and did his own thing. The result was the most divisive Star Wars movie to date. Johnson himself has admitted it was challenging to write The Last Jedi while The Force Awakens still being finished. This, to me, is the key to everything. What this says right here is Kathleen Kennedy is responsible and is the one who is totally incompetent and should be fired. Why in the hell would you, as the head of Lucasfilm, say... This is what we're going to do. We're going to work on two films at the same time, but we're going to let you, Ryan Johnson, you go ahead and do your own thing. Here are some of the main points that you might want to hit, but go ahead and just make your own movie while this one comes out. 
Then let's push back production, but still, you can go ahead and do your own thing. Don't change anything. You're, you, you do whatever I say, so I like you, so I'm going to just trust you with whatever it is you want to do. And then release a film that, as it says here, is the most divisive Star Wars film to date. This is the reason why Solo lost money. It's not because the films were released too quickly or too close to each other. It's because the person behind the scenes responsible for this choice did not have a firm grasp of it. Had they had someone with a creative mind, had they had someone who knew what the hell they were doing, they would either have had the same director making both films around the same time, so that way it would be cohesive and make sense, or would have Ryan Johnson on set with The Force Awakens so as he's writing his script, so that it's con it has a con uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm losing my mind here. So that there is some continuity to the actual story. She didn't do that. She instead said, "Hey, this is what we're gonna do." Oh, you're not ready yet? Fine, we'll push back your film. I don't care what your script looks like. I don't care if it's going to make no sense. I don't care if it's totally disjointed and disconnected from The Force Awakens. That is, you know, in my mind, that's how trilogies work. Trilogies can have three totally different films with totally different stories that don't have to connect whatsoever. And that's what we got. We got a movie that made no sense in the grand scheme of things, that took almost every single point, and that's why it's almost hard to believe that Johnson was ignorant of The Force Awakens because he literally takes every point that was set up by that movie and then says, screw it, I'm gonna do my own thing. And that's not how you make a cohesive trilogy. And the fault here rests solely on Kathleen Kennedy. Yes, Ryan Johnson wrote the movie. Yes, Ryan Johnson directed The Last Jedi. Yes, Ryan Johnson has attacked the fans. And I will go out of my way to call out Ryan Johnson every single time he acts like a fool, which is very often. But the buck stops with the person at the top. The buck stops with Kathleen Kennedy, who allowed this process to happen. The fact that we are reading this, the fact that we are hearing that the Star Wars trilogy was pushed out too fast, that we know Bob Iger said we did too much too fast, that is not the reason it didn't do well. The reason why it didn't do well is because the creative mind behind it, or the supposed creative mind behind it, had no idea what she was doing. That is why it failed. If the movies had been made in conjunction with each other, and had been on the same page, it would have been better. The fans would not have been pissed off. But guess what? Instead, they decided to run with a political message, they decided to run with identity politics, and, oh, I am female, hear me, war, I can do no wrong. And what resulted, as this article even said, was potentially the destruction of the franchise as we know it. Now, episode 9 is currently in production. And after the last Jedi Solo Star Story, it says in the very next paragraph, Lucasfilm is looking to course correct with Star Wars Episode 9. They've actually used that language that they want to course correct, which means they need to admit that there is something wrong. Remember when The Last Jedi came out? Remember how they said nothing was wrong? It was just a bunch of vocal, it was a vocal minority of racist bigots. They ran with this for a long time. Even recently, they, they said, look at the data we found that it's all Russian bots. And yet constantly, they admit that there were mistakes made. Constantly, they admit that there was total incompetence at the highest level. And yet nowhere in here do you see anyone calling out Kathleen Kennedy. You want to know why? It's because they're afraid. It's because they know if they don't, <laughs> they can be, they know that they can, you know, toe the line. They can be critical, but they can't call the people out who are responsible because they got to keep, they want to keep their job. They want to keep the press pass. They want to be on their opening night for episode nine. So that way they can tell all their Twitter followers, etc. So they like to toe this line, but isn't it interesting how now you start hearing about this? Isn't it interesting? Six months ago, this paragraph would not have existed. Six months ago, this paragraph right here would not exist because anyone with any common sense whatsoever can read this paragraph and say to themselves, how in the hell does Kathleen Kennedy still have a job if she allowed this to happen? And that's the question that I leave right now to you, Disney, to you, Bob Iger. How in the hell does Kathleen Kennedy still have a job when she has single-handedly destroyed one of the greatest IPs in history? It can be rebuilt but you need to find somebody who actually knows what the hell they're doing. Because unless you do, you're going to have the same type of incompetent decisions being made by Kathleen Kennedy and her underlings. Anyway, guys, what are y'all's thoughts about this? Isn't it interesting, though, that now you have <laughs> articles coming from Screen Rant that are actually being critical, that are actually calling people out without calling them out. Again, it's both surprising and not surprising at the same time because they're both going further than they have ever gone before, but also still remaining chill. It really is amazing to me overall. 
And at the end of the day, I just do not understand how in the hell they could possibly keep defending her. Other than the fact that they don't want to go after her because, let's just be honest, she's a woman. And she's a woman in power. And we can't go after her because, oh my gosh, that's sexist. And oh my god, we can't do that. Yes, you can. She is a moron. At least when it comes to running a universe. And the evidence is right here, right in front of you. And again, every single thing, all the mistakes are going to be listed right here. And yet nothing, nothing is going to be mentioned. Colin, I mean, you, you don't see any mention whatsoever of Kathleen Kennedy or any faulting of Kathleen Kennedy at any point in this. It might have just been one movie a year instead of two or three, but they almost tried to treat it the same as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For Star Wars, that just doesn't work. Yes, it can. If the creative mind is there and knows what they're doing, you're damn right it can work. And if you think this proves that, that, oh my gosh, you're right, because look, oh my God, I did some research. No, because you're being completely ignorant of the facts once again. Instead of one of the biggest, greatest franchises thriving, the best thing that can happen now is that after Star Wars Episode Nine, the Star Wars franchise goes away for a bit. It needs time to rest, regroup, and plot a new path forward. That goes for both the fandom and the movies themselves. Disney needs to let Star Wars breathe, just breathe, and then they can get they, they can start getting right again. No, what they need to do is they need to fire Kathleen Kennedy, they need to fire Ryan Johnson, and fire all of the stupid people on this supposed story group whose responsibility it was to maintain canon and yet totally let everything fall by the wayside. Anyway, guys, <laughs> I honestly cannot believe that after all of that, after setting up what could have been an amazing screw you and it's time to someone for someone to take the fall, instead they say, no, the problems are there, but we're just going to be completely ignorant of who's responsible. It's Kathleen Kennedy, by the way. Have a great day. And as always, God bless.